The opening hole at Dundalk Golf Club is called Cooley View. The hole is named after the view from the first tee across Dundalk Bay with the Cooley Mountains as a stunning backdrop. It's a gentle opening par 4, moving slightly left to right. Finding the left hand side of the fairway off the tee will leave an inviting approach to a green that receives a ball well and is guarded by two bunkers which are front left and front right. There is another bunker on the left hand side of a green that slopes from back to front. The second hole is named after Mrs Whitworth, who in 1923 leased 93 acres of land to the club to lay out a new 18-hole golf course. It's a downhill short par 4, measuring 370 metres off the blue tees. There is a hazard crossing the fairway at some 280 yards from the metal tees. The second shot is slightly uphill to a green with a hidden back tier. The narrow entrance has bunkers on either side. The third hole is Cook's Lane, which is named after the lane on the other side of the perimeter fence behind the tee. It's a formidable uphill par 4, demanding an accurate tee shot to leave a long second shot to a green that slopes severely from back to front. There are bunkers left and right on the approach to the green which will catch misplaced layups or shots that come up short. Hole 4 is on Skeach, which in Irish means bush, and in this case refers to the gnarled tree in the rough on the left hand side at the ridge which runs across the fairway. This is the index 1 hole on the course, and it's another long par 4, requiring a tee shot down the right hand side of the fairway. A second shot to a narrow green sloping back to front requires accuracy and distance control. There is a bunker along the left side of the green, but the other side can be used as a bailout area. The fifth hole is the first of four par threes on the course. Measuring 158 metres off the blue tees, it's a beautiful mid-range par three, with bunkers right and left and a water hazard lurking a little further left. The green is very narrow at the front, but opens up once enough club is used from the tee. It's called Deer Park, after a nine-hole course on the Carrick Macross Road in Dundalk, where golf was first played in the area in 1893, and it was Dundalk Golf Club's first home from its foundation in 1905. Felda, which is the name of the sixth hole, is the ancient name for Haggardstown, in which parish the course lies. This is the first of two consecutive par fives, and the more reachable one. A tee shot down the left-hand side of the fairway will leave an approach to a very well bunkered green. Any shot that doesn't carry will be swallowed up by the sand. The green slopes steeply from back to front and, from a narrow entrance, widens considerably. The original Haggard of Haggardstown was situated on the land to the far right of the sand bunker which you can see from the 7th tee on the right of the fairway. The 7th is a long par 5 requiring a tee shot to be hit between the two fairway bunkers. The second shot needs to be towards the left hand side of the fairway as a water hazard is hidden from view just off the fairway to the right in front of the green. An inviting third shot should leave a good birdie opportunity. To the right of the 8th tee was the site of the clubhouse and car park from 1923 until 1967. It now houses the on-course toilets and the greenkeeper's compound. The 8th is an uphill par 4, with a green hidden from view. The tee shot requires accuracy, not lent, ideally finishing some 20 yards short of the fairway bunker. A blind second shot to a two-tiered green requires commitment and enough club, as out of bounds lurks on the right there is trouble at the back 
and there are bunkers on the right and front left. The ninth hole is called Style, after an old style that used to be located on the right hand side of the hole at the boundary wall. This is another mid-range par 3, measuring 160 metres from the blue tees. It's inviting visually to a narrow green which slopes from back to front. The right hand side of the green is hard to access due to a feature pine tree short of the green. Distance control is paramount to ensure a birdie opportunity. The name of the tent hole is Barna Buil, which is an Irish phrase that also features in our national anthem and means gap of danger. It's an apt description for this particular hole, especially when viewed from all tees, especially those on the back tee box. It's a short par 5 that demands an accurate tee shot to be threaded through a funnel of trees. The second shot of a downslope to a well bunkered green requires accuracy, while those laying up can also find trouble left and right. The right hand side of the green possesses a tier only accessible with the softest approach. At 392 metres off the blue tees, the par 4 11th hole carries a stroke index of 2. It's a sweeping left to right dog leg. From the tee, one should seek the left hand side of the fairway, as this leaves an uphill second shot to a deep long green. The left hand side of the green is well protected by a large hidden bunker, so extra club is required to a pin on the left. This hole remembers Michael McGill, from whom the club bought various parcels of land over the years. These were located on the western side of the course, and much of this land was incorporated into the extension of the course in 1980. As one progresses down the 12th fairway, Schlieve Gulliam, to the west of the Cooley Mountains, can be seen in the distance. The mountain features prominently in stories from Irish mythology about legendary warriors Finn McCool and Cúchollan. The par 5 12th dog legs from right to left, with a water hazard crossing the fairway at 240 yards from the metal tee. A narrow second shot awaits, with hazards left, right and long. So, laying up just right of the fairway bunker is always a good option when trying to hit the two-tier green. Hole 13 is a par 3, measuring 162 metres from the blue tees. A deep, long green with bunkers left and right is the feature of this particular hole. The back pin position requires a lot of club and attention is needed on the sloped green. It's called Braid's Way after James Braid who won the British Open five times and was also a noted golf architect. In 1934 he inspected the course and made a number of recommendations which were subsequently carried out over the next few years. Hole 14 is a short par 4 measuring 294 metres off the blue tees. It has a semi-blind tee shot. The line off the tee is over the centre of the mound to leave a short approach to a small, wonderfully bunkered green. This hole is known as Winninall. At one time the large mound which straddles the 14th fairway was covered in winds, a type of yellow gorse bush. Hole 15 is known as the Chapel Pass. The gap in front of the ladies' tee on this hole was part of the Chapel Pass from Blackrock to Haggardstown Church and ran across the golf course to the boundary beside the ninth green. Hole 15 measures 377 metres off the blue tees and this long par 4 sweeps right to left with trees lining the fairway. A tee shot on the right hand side leaves an open approach to a green running back to front which is guarded by bunkers left and right.
At 393 metres, hole 16 is another long par 4, turning right to left and demands length and accuracy off the tee. The second shot is semi-blind to a two-tiered green sloping heavily from front to back, with bunkers right and left and trees just off the back. The hole is named in honour of Jimmy Cassidy Sr. and his son Jimmy Cassidy Jr., who served with distinction as club professionals at Dundalk for 72 years from 1928 until 2000. At 173 metres off the blue tees, the 17th hole is a wonderful par 3 with a narrow undulating deep green. Visually, it is all in front of you, with bunkers left and right and an inviting green. The tee is sheltered, so watch out for any wind that cannot be felt. The hole is called Hawk's Nest and has been inspired by the fact that in recent years hawks have nested in the copse between the 17th tee and the 18th fairway. The final hole, the 18th, is a par 4, measuring 320 metres off the blue tees. The tee shot is testing, with fairway bunkers left and long, and trees all along the right hand side. The fairway runs left to right, with the second shot played uphill to a green that receives a ball well, but is guarded by bunkers left and right, and has a drop at the back. The name of the hole is Ciaun Scrieve, which is a phrase from the Irish language, which means journey's end. The 19th hold awaits with its excellent restaurant and bar.